please download this video or share it as you like. Uh, please do so quickly because it's probably not going to be up very long. We're going to move to Pam Popper, who is going to talk about the state of affairs and how in some locations it is as if we are still under a king or an emperor. These stay-at-home orders and uh, social distancing nonsense has reached critical heights and tyrannical measures have been put in place in a lot of areas. Then we're going to move to Greg Anderson, who was recently fired from the Seattle PD um, because he made a video about his refusal to enforce these unconstitutional stay-at-home orders. And then we're going to move to Michael Cini of Troy, New York, who was uh, put on suspension recently for the same reason and will probably be fired. The good news is, as a lot of us, like myself, who are standing up, hopefully a lot of you who watch this channel share my views. I hate to use this channel as a uh, platform to promote other agendas, but it's it's necessary in this case. It's, it's the right thing to do. It's time to put pressure on law businesses, on local businesses to open up despite penalties. It's time to put pressure on local lawmakers to get send them the message that we do not value safety and security more than constitutional freedoms and liberties. That's the critical angle here. So let's get started. All right, so I want to talk about some lockdown madness today. Jay Inslee has appointed himself the king of Washington state and he's made all of his citizens serfs. On May 12th, he announced that no one can leave the house even to purchase food if they refuse to be tested. He stated that he had confirmed with the attorney general, Bob Ferguson, that there can be sanctions in civil and criminal court if anyone violates his order. Um, during the press conference where this was announced, one reporter asked, quote, when it comes to contact tracing, how are you guys going to handle people or families who want to refuse to test or self-isolate? Like if they want to leave home to get groceries, I know you said they can't do that. So how will you make sure they don't? And Inslee replies, we will have attached to the families a family support person who will check in with them to see what they need on a daily basis and help them. If they can't get a friend to do their grocery shopping, we will help them get groceries in some fashion. If they need pharmaceuticals to be picked up, we will make sure they get their pharmaceuticals. That's going to help encourage them to maintain their isolation. As far as refusal, uh, the uh, emperor says, um, it just shouldn't come to that and it really hasn't. We've had really good success when we ask people to isolate and they've done so in really high percentages. So we're happy about that and we believe that will continue. Therefore, those individuals who refuse to cooperate with contact tracers or refuse testing will not be allowed to leave their homes to purchase basic necessities such as groceries or prescriptions. He says, those persons will need to make arrangements through friends, family, or a state-provided family support person. Those are quotes from uh, the emperor or king of Washington, Jay Inslee. He also issued an order stating that in order for Washington state restaurants to open, they will have to collect the names of diners in order to assist in contact tracing. And those areas approved by the emperor for restaurant reopening, capacity must be limited to 50% and no more than five people can sit at one table. Restaurants will be required to create a daily log of customers and maintain that log for 30 days, including telephone, email, contact information and time in the restaurant. This is to aid in any contact tracing should that become necessary. Under phase two rules, hand sanitizer must be available to employees and customers. Restaurant tables must be placed far enough apart that guests at one table are six feet apart from guests at another. Quote, it is strongly suggested that customers wear a cloth face mask covering any time they're not seated at the table. Buffets and salad bars are not allowed in, men allowed in menus and condiments have to be one time use only. In addition, restaurants are required to screen employees for signs of COVID at the beginning of every shift and each employer needs to designate a COVID-19 supervisor to monitor the health of employees and enforce the job site safety plan. Now, to illustrate what life is like in Washington state under the emperor, uh, king, whatever you wanna call him, Jay Emsley, who clearly doesn't care about people at all, um, this is a first-hand report. I live in Washington state and I'm dumbfounded that our draconian governor has hatched up his next unconstitutional violation in the name of fighting the virus. He announced he's hired and trained over 1,300 people, including some National Guard, to become contract tracers. I live in Benton County and there's a COVID, COVID quarantine center ready for children that require quarantine if they test positive or have potentially come in contact with someone that tests positive and cannot be adequately separated. 
It's located in Bethel Church on Chalky Road, just a few short miles from my home. So let me get this straight. In order to fight the deadly virus that hasn't reached the same level as the flu, anyone who can't guarantee that they can adequately quarantine away from other family or household members or who have only one bathroom can, can potentially be forced to go to a quarantine center, and this includes minor children who can be taken away from their parents if they test positive or even if they've just been exposed to somebody and test positive. So every home with only one bathroom has the potential to lose children or loved ones separated to be housed in a COVID quarantine center. I went to the CDC website to get more information and they actually support this nonsense. I can think of so many scenarios and families that would not meet the criteria listed. Think about an exposed person has to have a private room and a private bathroom. So if you have two children sharing a room, one of the, the kids are gonna be taken away from you. Um, the households with multi-age groups that share a living space. I mean, people with elderly parents, their parents are gonna be taken away. Um, but, but what's really disturbing is isolating the children and taking them, you can't gather in the church for church services, but we can gather quarantined children who've been taking away from the, taken away from their parents. So this writer goes on to tell me she's found, uh, she found a job posting for social workers to supervise the children and provide education and activities uh, while they're quarantined and they get 20% more than their normal salaries if they'll sign up to do it. So social workers are being paid to watch children in a church who are positive for COVID or exposed to a COVID person and removed from their home because the, they, they need to be quarantined. I mean, it's shocking and it's frightening and, um, and it is big brother. It is big brother. And um, I guess maybe the only good thing we can say is that some of these politicians are showing us what life would be like if they controlled the rest of the country. We should all think about that really hard. She finishes by saying, hello out there, it's time to wake up people. It really is time to wake up people. We're gonna have to do something about this. So um, stay tuned after Memorial Day, I'll be talking about what we're gonna do. All right, so we'll go on to look at what's going on in Michigan. According to the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, during the week ending May 2nd, 2020, there was no flu in Michigan, no cases. The report specifically said they broke it down into laboratory virologic surveillance, zero new positive influenza results. Um, congregate setting outbreaks, zero new respiratory outbreaks. Influenza-like illness outpatient surveillance, 0.8% below the national baseline. So this was the week ending May 2nd, and what did Gretchen Whitmer do? She extended the lockdown to May 26th, and she doesn't understand why people are protesting because she is the queen of Michigan, uh, has appointed herself to be uh, the ruler of the people there, and um, trounce, trouncing all over their constitutional rights for absolutely no reason at all. Now, I can't wait to hear how people are gonna spin this because if you took all the counties in Michigan and divided them by five and looked at neighboring states and took into consideration that somebody from Ohio might've crossed the border, you can see why Gretchen would lock everything down. I mean, you know, I don't know what you make of these things, but I'm appalled. Now, as if that isn't enough, let me tell you what's coming next. House Resolution 6666 was introduced by Bobby Rush. It's called the COVID-19 Testing, Tra Reaching, and Contacting Everyone or TRACE Act. Um, he's a congressman from Illinois who has a very strong anti-Israel voting record. For the record, I thought I would tell you that. This proposes allocating $100 billion to organizations that can provide testing and contact tracing through mobile health units or at people's homes. The grants would be made via the Department of Health and Human Services and the Director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. It says, quote, authorities may award grants to eligible entities to conduct diagnostic testing for COVID-19, to trace and monitor the contacts of infected individuals and to support the quarantine of such contacts through mobile health units and as necessary, testing individuals and providing individuals with services related to testing and quarantine at their residences. So this communist, I don't know what else to call him, thinks that the federal government should have the ability to conduct surveillance on all of us. It's an invasion of privacy. It's a resolution. It'll never pass the Senate and the president will never sign it, thankfully. Um, but um, interesting guy, Bobby Rush, has a lot of plans for us. He must really love uh, Inslee and Whitmer. I would imagine they are great friends um, and uh, together they could cook up all kinds of things. Now, as if that isn't enough, the Rockefeller Foundation made an announcement through its president, Rajiv Patel, in an interview with Andrea Mitchell on MSNBC. So Patel, 
Of course, so these people are so much smarter than us. I said this last week, if we need to listen to the smart people, right? Because they're so right about everything. He says that we're not doing enough, type, enough testing to do the right type of surveillance. So the foundation's going to invest $100 million to test 3 million people a week for eight weeks and then get it up to 30 million in six months, which means the plan is to test everybody, this private foundation. Five to 15 billion is allocated to hire 300,000 Americans in what he calls a community health corps who will execute the plan and do contact tracing. People who have been exposed to COVID will be identified and quarantined. It's already started. They have been in contact with uh, mayors and health departments and governors of states. Patel says this is the way for Americans to safely go back to work and to school. Really? The foundation has created a digital sharing platform for the data and he says it's a really small investment because we're losing billions of dollars every week as the economy is shut down. So now we get to wait for the Rockefeller Foundation to give us permission. Um, I'm going to have more to say about the Rockefeller Foundation in my upcoming book. Horrifying. Um, go look them up and see some of the things that they were involved in during the World War II with the Nazis. And you'll understand why maybe people like me are a little panicked about the Rockefeller Foundation being part, partners with our government to do this type of thing. So um, this stuff should frighten you. Like I said, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing what the haters are gonna email to me this week about how you spin this data. And I can't fathom anybody thinking this is a good idea. And if you do think it's a good idea, you don't belong in the United States of America where we treasure our freedom, where we are here, our constitution guarantees our freedom and our liberty. You belong in China, Russia, Venezuela is a good place to be. I will highly recommend Cuba. It's a wonderful place. And there are some great countries with totalitarian regimes in Africa that you might want to check out as well. You would feel right at home there if you think this is a good idea. As a police officer, I'm compelled to make this video. I've been in law enforcement for 10 years and I'm speaking to my peers, other fellow officers, people in any kind of law enforcement position. Um, I've seen officers nationwide enforcing tyrannical orders against the people and i'm hoping i'm hoping it's a minority of officers but i'm not sure anymore because every time i turn on the television every time i turn i look to the internet i'm seeing people arrested or cited for going to church for traveling on the roadways for going surfing opening their businesses going to the park with their families um or doing nails out of their out of their own house using their own house as a place of business and have an undercover agents go there and arrest them and charge them with with what with a crime I don't I don't know what crime people are committing by doing nails in their own house but we're seeing this more and more and more and uh, we need to start looking at ourselves as officers and thinking is what I'm doing right now I want to remind you that regardless of where you stand on the coronavirus we don't have the authority to do those things to people just because a mayor or a governor tells you otherwise uh, I don't care if it's your sergeant or your chief of police we don't get to violate people's constitutional rights because somebody in our chain of command tells us otherwise it's not how this country works um, those are de facto arrests, you know? We're violating people's rights and, and, and taking money from them, or even worse, arresting them and depriving them of their freedom when they are exercising their constitutional rights. So let's, let's talk about that. Um, let's, let's read something right here off of the Declaration of Independence. All men are created equal. Among these, we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their power from the consent of the governed. Meaning, their, our power, and any government official's power is derived from the people. Okay, We don't hold power over our citizens. That's... it's. It's contradictory to everything that our country stands for. 
and, and this is what I'm seeing. First Amendment rights, telling people they can't go to church, freedom of religion, okay? Telling people they can't protest, freedom of assembly. Um, Fourth Amendment violations, illegal traffic stops to check for papers. What are you, the Gestapo? Is this 1930s Nazi Germany? You don't get to stop people unless you have reasonable suspicion or probable cause that they have committed a crime. And I know people that are, have personally been stopped saying we want to see papers showing that you're essential. That is not how our job works, okay? What really has been pissing me off lately is the fact that these officers that are going out here and, and, and enforcing these tyrannical orders, what they're doing is they're making my job and my safety, or, or they're putting my job and my safety at risk. Because what you're doing is you're widening the gap between public trust and law enforcement officers. And, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna, I mean, look at, look at what's happened to law enforcement in the last 10 years. Less and less public trust, and more often than not, that is a result of isolated incidents that get blown out of proportion. They're not isolated anymore. They're happening every single day. And the thing that I want you guys to realize is that our power that, uh, that we hold as law enforcement officers, it's nothing more than a facade. It's a badge and a gun. And people, uh, you don't realize if you haven't lived in anarchy, if you haven't seen combat, things can be stripped from people in a heartbeat. And, and that's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid that these actions are going to wake a sleeping giant, i.e. the American people, okay? They are going to be put in a position where they won't have their rights trampled anymore. And us as law enforcement officers, we'll, we'll have our ability to enforce the law stripped from us in about 10 minutes, okay? I, I don't, I think what is gonna happen if this continues is we're gonna see bloodshed in the streets, okay? I don't want to see bloodshed in the streets on either side of this coin. I don't wanna see fellow officers get injured or killed and I certainly don't wanna see citizens get injured or killed. And I promise you, most of you out there doing these, these, these tyrannical acts against our citizens, you're not ready for combat. You're not mentally or physically ready for combat in the first place. I promise you, you don't wanna go through that and I hope I never have to go through that again. Um, you know, you don't get to just say, well, I'm doing this because I was told to do so, or I'm following orders, or I need to keep this job. Guess what? I need to keep this job more than anybody. I have three young children. I have two houses. Like, I have the same sob story that the rest of you guys have. But my personal choices and my living arrangements, no matter what they are, don't allow me to trample on people's rights. And I don't understand why that concept is so hard for, for people to understand. Listen, you need to stand up for what's right. You need to, if, if, you're, if you're part of a department or an agency that is asking people or asking their officers or their deputies to impose on people's rights and infringe on their 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 freedoms you need to step up and say no that's not me that's not what I signed up for and that's going against my oath and if that costs you your job so be it at least you'll be able to look at yourself in the mirror at night I've already expressed this to my department and, and luckily for me I come from a department that I feel like my chain of command shares my view but I don't care what department you're part of or what your chain of command thinks you don't get to trample on people's liberty and so, you know, as a special operations veteran, I fought on the streets of Iraq for under the US government's guise of freedom. And I'm telling you what, the American people are going to be, they are, you are gonna wake a sleeping giant and they are gonna fight 10 times harder for their freedom on their soil than anything you've ever seen before. And if that's something you're willing to face, then, then keep trampling on people's rights. But I promise you, the American spirit of defiance is going to rise again, and it's gonna be a big problem for our country. 
So I'll leave you with this, something that I learned as a, an E-nothing in the army. No matter what situation you're put in, if you look inside yourself and ask yourself one question, am I doing the right thing? You ask yourself that, you know the answer. And no amount of money or no order or law or anything should be able to make you go against doing the right thing. So I'm imploring officers to look inside themselves and ask themselves, is this what I want to be doing to my citizens? And, and I think the answer is clear. And if we all stand up together, guess what? It'll be a non-issue, no factor, because people and law enforcement will be united like we should be. My name is Michael Cini. I wanted to make a quick video after seeing it one recently from a fellow police officer who pointed out and was very verbal about his thoughts that I believe many of us share. I decided to make my own video, encourage others to do the same. What we've seen in recent months is none other than what I believe is gonna be viewed as one of the biggest power grabs in American history. We've seen the Constitution seemingly suspended and constitutional rights of citizens tossed aside under the guise of safety and security, something that we've seen before as well. You know, I swore an oath to the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and I stand on that oath, and I will continue to stand on that oath, and there is not a human being that can alter my oath between myself and the Constitution, myself and God. You know, choice means having multiple options. If you find yourself only looking at what you see on one new source or the other, that's not choice. You're just falling in line. You know, I ask every human being and every American citizen to question things and look at them, look at both sides. Anyone that knows me from my political side of my life knows that I don't really walk one side hard left or hard right. I stand somewhere in the middle, a place I am proud to be. But you have to look and at least acknowledge some of these videos like Plandemic, where we have doctors out there talking about some things that are inconsistent with what you're seeing in mainstream media. At least look at it. Look at it and then decide, okay, does that make sense or not? And make a choice. Because that's what freedom's about, choice. But if you're not even watching these things and you're just taking one side and just eating every bit of it and projecting it, then what are you really? Sheep, okay? We look for more than that and expect more. You're supposed to educate yourself before you vote. I always do. I read things. That's part of where I've made it this far in life and my opinions made because I make them. I judge nobody by what anyone says. I judge them on my own interactions. You should judge this entire situation on your personal interactions and see what you come up with. You know, as far as immune system goes, I find it so troubling that people are so quick to lock themselves in their house for 60, 90 days. Yes, Corona is terrible. Yes, it's killing people and that scares me. But I always look for a strategy to beat something, not just to barely survive, okay? I'm out there every single day dealing with people and dirty germs and I've been just fine. Even per Governor Cuomo's daily news, and I'm gonna post a picture on here, today I took a screenshot of his newscast. And as of today, May 7th, he put out there that 66% of new corona cases are coming from people that are not leaving their house. Ask yourself why. Well, if you look at any of these doctors that recently put a video up about your immune system, it's that every one of us goes out there and touches dirty germs all day, every day. Children do it all during your existence. And those germs ultimately serve to increase and boost your immune system's ability to fight common things, like even say a cold. Now, ask yourself, if somebody's in their house for 120 days surrounded by Lysol and no new germs, no germs, no immune system activation from 90 days of being around the same exact things, what do you think's gonna happen in the fall when they start to leave their house? I would suggest a common cold is now gonna possibly spike their fever and put them in the hospital. That's problematic. That's gonna cause a hospital overflow. Young 20 year olds that have perfectly healthy immune systems can keep social distancing. I just call that self-respect. But to lock yourself away from society and shut down our economy 
and deteriorate our entire society's immune systems. It's not right. As of today, 66% of new cases of corona are coming from people that are from their home, have not left their home, yet they get it. Do they touch groceries? Do they have Amazon still coming to their house? I'm pretty sure they do, and they're still getting it. Those of us that are out here every day have seemingly have herd immunity. I'm not afraid to say that anymore. The truth is I remember being sick months ago. I know many people that have, and we're just okay now. Think about that. Think about your own interactions and see if you can really say that you've given this the thought of both sides or are you just following along? Another thing that should flag to any of us is censorship. I've been censored more times in the last two months than I have ever in my life. And when I say censored, I mean I put things on Facebook. I'm not getting a notice that says, hey, you violated our policy, this can't be on there. That hasn't happened to me one time. I don't even know what that looks like. But I know that I've communicated with people and within a couple volleys of thread in the public setting, the entire thread disappears and that's just that. Last time it happened to me was yesterday. I was in communication with a young female who basically pointed out some inconsistencies in the media. Scrolling through, I said, you're exactly right. Look into this. She said something, I said something, entire thread disappeared. She then reached out to me and said, did you erase it? No, I didn't. She's confused. How did that just happen? That's never happened to her before. I told her, welcome to the club. The censorship going on right now on social media is alarming. It should alarm you. Videos are being taken down under the guise of for public safety. And here's another point that fires me up to no end. When you have men in power literally saying that you are not allowed to protest during the pandemic. You're not allowed to protest during the pandemic? You're right, you don't want people on top of each other. But then you need to stop making laws and changing things. The entire American system of government is based on the fact that you work for the people. And when you push the people too hard, they come together and tell you you need to knock it off. So when you're saying you cannot exercise that hugely important American right, but you're still continuing to make laws and change things and implement changes that have far reaching effects. Do you see the monopoly here? Don't protest, not allowed to protest, don't leave your house, but we're gonna change X, Y, Z. And then suddenly I see Bill Gates, Bill Gates suddenly in charge of New York education. He's got no background in that. He's a good computer guy. I don't buy any of this. You wanna change our entire way of life based on something that has a kill, it does kill, but at a smaller number than they've projected. And some people are willing to change our entire way of life. I despise every single time I'm forced as a healthy person to walk around here with a mask on. I don't like it. It's unconstitutional. It is completely unconstitutional. So if you're okay with it, at least be able to admit and say, yes, it is unconstitutional, but I support breaking the constitution from time to time. But don't sit here and say somehow that anybody that dissents your opinion that you should be locked in your house for three months or four months is somehow not supporting the team. I'm out here supporting the team every day. I've served in combat theaters all over this world. And there's that other point I wanted to make. This other police officer did too. He's this army special operations uh, operator and now he's a police officer and he brings a great point and it, it hit me hard this morning when I watched his video he says flat out you know how terrible combat is and that a lot of these people don't understand how close it could be when you really start trampling on people's rights for them to rise up that is part of the American spirit and we're seeing these people start to talk and the chatters up hence you know all the suppression on social media I've been overseas and I've been in combat and it's terrifying. And that was in a country that has been abused for hundreds of years under a complete and utter dictatorship. And with old equipment and limited supplies, they put up one heck of a fight. Those of you out there that think that somehow Americans are just gonna roll over and continue to let you trample all over their rights, especially you police officers, I will tell you, I am not naive to what some of the people in this world have, and Americans especially, the kind of hardware they keep locked in deep, dark places. And I am well aware of their fighting spirit because five years ago, six years ago, I was one of them too. I put on a badge because I'm proud to serve my community in a helpful manner. I wear this badge right here 
because I support the Constitution of the United States of America and I've already accepted and resigned myself that I'd be willing to risk my life over, you know, for anyone else's that I, I stated an oath to serve. In this case, me being verbal right now is the same exact concept. People need to open their eyes. Look what's going on. Look at multiple media sources. Look at some of these videos and really ask yourself if this is all making sense to you. Do these steps are we taking, are they effective? If they are effective, how is 66% of new corona cases in New York coming from people that haven't left their house? Think on that for a minute. Just know if you're a police officer out there, I hope you all start to really get the nerve to speak your mind and speak the truth. Point out these things and hopefully others will join. They're starting to see doctors out there and come together to really make it clear that we support the constitution. We support human life and protecting the most human life we can in this country. And we can't do that if we cripple our economy and send our young and healthy to erase their immune systems in their homes. I support everyone's right of free choice. Whether you wanna stay in your house for one year or not, that's up to you and I support every bit of your right to do that because this is America. But stop virtue signaling and acting like the rest of us are criminals because we wanna go visit our relative who wants to visit us. Because I'll tell you right now, I visit my family. Yes, I do. And I'll continue to do that. And there's not a human being that's gonna stop me from doing that. To the rest of you out there, I wish you all the best. Be safe, educate yourself, and just know there are officers out here that understand what's going on. And we stand to defend the oath to the Constitution above all else. Thanks. Good day, everybody be safe.